Hello guys, Grumpy. Welcome back to another Feed the Beast tutorial. Today we're going to be covering the player detector. Now it's part of the Greg's Tech Mod. Um, it's a pretty cool block. Basically what it does is it detects any player within a 16 block radius of it. And it's got settings. Let me show you. You can right click it and you can set it to, to where it will detect only the person who put, put the block down. Uh, detect only other players. That would be good for building traps probably. Um, so it won't it'll ignore you but if anybody else steps in this area like maybe your secret base or whatever it'll zap them or something you can hook it up to something to make them die but anyway click it again it'll detect all players so probably most of the time you're probably going to use this setting or the other setting this play right this setting right here detects all players that would be good for a public do uh, for a public door and detects only you that would be good for a door that you only want to open um, for you so that's actually what we're going to be doing with this uh, uh, player detector today. We're going to be building an automatic door. Well, it's already built. I'm just going to show you how to how it works so you can build it yourself. But basically, you step up to it, and it'll open and close on its own. You notice there's no uh, pressure plates or anything. So that's pretty cool. Um, let me show you a little bit about this, a little bit more about this thing. First I'm going to show you kind of how to craft it. Well, I'm not going to show you the whole thing, but you'll get the gist of it. It's going to take a Greg Tech computer cube, advanced circuits, all kinds of things. It's stupidly expensive to make this thing. It's very time consuming. It's going to take a lot of iridium, a lot of diamonds. And honestly, I like Greg Tech, but this it's just it's stupid to make it this complicated to build. Personally, what I plan on doing, if I ever want to use one of these things, I'm just going to like throw away four diamonds and cheat myself player detector in because it's like I don't know if you ever tried to build a computer cube but let me sh go backwards in the recipe book energy you need it two energy flow circuits let's see how to make those you need a radium plate let's see how to make that implosion compressor uh, uh, that's new iridium alloy ingot that takes four pieces of iridium diamond dust this is stupidly ridiculous just for a player detector so honestly, most of the time I don't condone cheating, but I'm going to be cheating myself in these things if I ever plan on using them. And I want to thank any less of you if you did. I like Greg's tech, but there's something wrong when a blare detector is harder to build than a nuclear reactor. Okay, so let's go ahead and show you how this uh, player detector works a little bit more. So by the time you, this video is over, you'll know how to build this. But basically, I, I've built uh, two of them. Here's one over here. And there's one over here. Now I drew these circles. These circles serve no purpose other than to show you the radius of this detector. Anything inside this radius uh, will make this thing light up player wise. And I created two of them now. I built my circle out of blocks because well, it's Minecraft you only can build stuff out of blocks. But imagine that was a line. What you would see is you would see two circles and they would overlap and it would create like a, a kind of a a football shape, an American football shape in the middle. And that intersection, when something's standing in that intersection of those two circles, um, both of these player detectors will light up at the same time. And so let's come down here. There you go, because I, I came into this radius. Um, this one came on. Now as I walk away, you'll see it go out. And I can come over here in this radius. This one will come on. But if I'm in the middle, They both come on and the door opens. So let me show you how this uh, control circuit works. It's very simple. Um, I've got red alloy wire coming off each detector. This one has to go up underneath. But uh, there's the one coming off there. And here's the one coming off the other detector. And they go into the simple logic circuit. This is called a NAND gate. Uh, there it is right there in the inventory. Um, basically what it is, it's an AND gate with a NOT gate on the output. So normally what an AND gate does is if both inputs are high, uh, the output is high. So this thing has got two inputs right now. And normally on an AND gate, when both inputs are high, the output's high. Well, this is an AND gate, so it's going to invert the logic. So what's going to happen is in, when both inputs are high, the output goes low. And the reason we're having to invert the signal is because uh, pist pist sticky pistons work backwards. In other words, if you energize these pistons, the door closes. And so that's why we're using an AND gate instead of an AND gate. So 
that's not too hard to craft. Uh, you'll need a red alloy furnace. You can figure it out. But um, if you want to adjust it, you'll need either a sonic screwdriver or a screwdriver. Uh, the sonic screwdriver, uh, same thing. The regular screwdriver has durability. It'll eventually break. The sonic screwdriver will just run out of uh, electricity and you got to recharge it. Um, so if you right click on the AND gate, it'll rotate it. And if you hold down the shift key, it'll change the number of inputs and outputs. By default, this thing has three inputs. We only want to use two of them, so we have to disable the third one. So how do we do that? Well, we just uh, right, hold down the shift key and right click until we get these two on and the other one off. So there we go. We got both of them on. This side's on, this side's on, this side's off. It's disabled. So let me come over here and make sure I got it right. Yeah, I got it right. And so the output of the NAND gate goes up here to these two pistons, sticky pistons. And then this wire goes beneath the floor or the ground and comes back up the other side. And it powers those two sticky pistons. And so I kind of left this open so that you could see like the circles, how they overlap and everything. But uh, basically if you were to, you could put a roof on this thing, it'd look pretty, a lot better. I mean, let me do that real quick a little bit. This is basically how, how I'm going to do it. I'll just have like a, a corridor and when you walk up the door it opens. When you walk away it'll close. And by the way these are just iron blocks here on the door and on the floor here. I think they look pretty cool in a setup like this. Makes it look like an elevator door or something or something off Star Trek. But anyway let me show you one, one thing here. Uh, don't remember if I mentioned this, but this detector block has a range of 16 blocks. So if we were to actually count out 16 blocks, let me show you something. Now I have this torch here, it's at 5 blocks. This one's at 10. So here's 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and here's 16. Now we're exactly 16 blocks away right now, but here's the thing. If you stand on this side of the block, the detector's on. If you stand on this side of the block, the detector goes off so um, that's just something to note it's, it's exactly a 16 block radius so if you take the center of the of the detector as the zero point the center of this block will be one then two then three etc etc and so if you want to use this to make an automatic door what you want to do is you want to count off 16 blocks so there's five I got another torch there there's ten 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So I count from the detector to the opposite wall or either direction you can count from here but you wanted exactly 16 blocks. So if I wanted to uh, detect the player in a hallway, a hallway that's two blocks wide, I'll start counting from the wall itself. So there's, I'm at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, four five six all the way back to 16 so that's critical um, here's another thing I, I don't remember if I mentioned this either but this thing does detect stuff in a spherical pattern so I actually have this little demonstration here too we're gonna fly up now I'm standing right directly above the detector and it, it's, it, it's detecting me because I'm inside the sphere but watch me fly up up oh, my hit uh, space too quick as you can see it goes off um, yeah if I stand here on this block this block is like I guess 16 blocks high but as you can see it's off so there it comes back on um, another thing to note about this block if I was gonna if you're gonna use a setup I would recommend probably not doing too many of them because I'm guessing what this thing is having to do is um, every tick or every fifth tick or whatever um, it's probably checking the location of every player on the server and doing the math to figure out what if they're within the radius of it so um, if there's like 10 people on the server and it's having to do a lot of math Pythagorean theorem and all that it could possibly lag the server so I'd probably limit myself to one or two of these doors probably um, but anyway I hope you found this tutorial helpful once again it's about the player detector block um, if you like this video please give it a like uh, helps my channel, but also too when a video gets a lot of likes, I don't make more videos of that type. But anyways, grumpy. Appreciate all you guys watching. We'll see you next time.